Oh, okay, this... You're going to see a couple of deaths here. This is sort of one of the... I consider this battle here to be almost... Almost kind of the get the almost kind of the final boss of the game, in a way. Huh. It's not the final battle, but it's the biggest or second biggest, and it's the toughest. Interesting. And there's no like giant like. Unfortunately, the, the only the uh, you don't really get it. You don't get many like big encounters in the way of like you know when we fought you know the the, the plant monster. Which is kind of too bad. It might have might have been nice having a couple more like giant creatures to fight. Huh. Yeah. But you got sort of the mother of all battles here, and it's hard because like they're coming from multiple directions, so you can't just hole up in one area behind cover and let them come to you. You gotta keep you gotta keep moving. Right. More so than I did just then. So let's give that another. Yeah, so I, like I said, I consider this cut that fight there kind of, kind of the unofficial final boss. Mm. Even though it's not actually the final fight. That's interesting. Spoiler alert, I don't win on this attempt either. <laughs> oh! No, it's like a big, it's big like an explosive flare. Huh. Like a ah, shotgun shell up that guy's ass, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's like an exploding flare. Or a little, like a little rocket. It does kind of make like a, it does basically make a fireworks sound though. Yeah, when I hear that noise, I don't typically think flare. Oh, down yeah. I go. All right, now let's go to another track. Oh, you know what? You know why I think that, that I think that noise is a, a fireworks. Why? Because they used the they opened up the old Raw is War with those fireworks that were supposed to be like flare missiles. Remember? Oh, do they sound like that? Yeah, they would have those two ones shoot down near the Titan Tron, and then it would go. I just realized okay. you probably couldn't hear me make an explosion noise in my mouth. Not really. But, you know, they, it's more fun if the audience can imagine it. Yeah. This is a really crazy fight. 
My preferred tactic is to mostly keep to the upper level. Um, where I'm, where at least I can't, where I, at least I can be hit by fewer directions at once. You know. Yeah, it seems like you've got a good thing going. On. Yeah, at least this way, there's usually two or at most three, two or at most three possible directions of incoming fire. That wall of nails just uh -huh. gets me every time. Have you ever <laughs> seen the transporter? Yes. You, you remember how that, uh, I, I think it's in the transporter too, actually. It's been a while. Um, there's the, like, he's fighting this, uh, I want to say he's like a vaguely European evil millionaire. Okay. And he's got, like, that Russian girlfriend who's also an assassin. It's, it's like I said, it's been a long time. I need to see those movies again. Well, anyways, he, he fights that one girl in the mansion, and they've got just a giant-ass wall of nails for no <laughs> reason. I'll give what, you... you don't, what, you don't in your house? No. <laughs> but I'll give you one guess as to how that the Russian lady dies. Um... Heart disease? If only. That's what it looks like when you get hit by the penetrator. You gotta yank it out. Oh, yeah. It's fairly unpleasant looking. So where so, like are I said, keep... Trish and Ishii? They're on the lower level. Oh. And, and they're helpful here because they do... I mean, they draw they draw a lot of enemy fire, and they do actually do do some damage as well. Nice. So you basically, you let them stay on the lower level to sort of tie some of the enemy down while you stay up here defending yourself... Oh yeah! Oh yes. Very nice. You stay up here and you defend yourself, and then when you're not under immediate attack, you can support them by firing down from above. Seems like the best way to do it. It now occurs to me that one way you could kind of cheap ass your way through this is just to like spam the uh, thumper repeatedly. Yeah. Let a bunch of guys come in and then just because it basically lays waste to the whole area. <laughs> But that would be unsporting. Also pretty expensive. Those thumper charges aren't cheap. It's not like Although, you're wanting for cash or Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Why is why is there not a transporter game? That begs for it. I don't know. Or a crank game for that matter. I would play a crank game. I would play the shit out of a crank game. <laughs> it was, like, very heavily inspired by arcade-style action games, too. Oh, yeah! I love how the pre I love how the premise is, you know, because, you know, it's like, you know, his heart rate has to be kept up. Basically, the premise of the movie is, if the movie gets boring, the, the protagonist will die. <laughs> they came up with a premise to justify that being the actual plot. An action movie, it was, and it was great. Oh, I love crank. Um... Damn. Oh, man. Way to bring, way to ruin the mood, Trish. I know. Thanks, Jennifer Hale. <laughs> you have ruined Let's Play Bullet Storm. No, she didn't ruin it. She just brought the mood way, way down. I'm actually hyper aware of them, of them now, ever since that fiasco with the Ishii and Trish disappearing. So, uh, oh, oh, you, oh, keep making sure that they're still there and then yeah. we're not wandering into some some nightmare of nightmarish bug. I'm just like, I'm like, oh, where are they? Oh, where, oh they're there. Okay. Everything can be as fine. It's like the ba the baggage, like conveyor belt. Oh. I'm not sure what this part is here. I've always wanted to go in those though. Really? Yeah. Have you played? I, 
Have you played Splinter Cell? Actually, no. Um, in Pandora tomorrow, you infiltrate LAX because there's a terror organization doing bad terrorist stuff. Okay. And uh, one of the modes of entry is to go in through the baggage claim area and you, like, ride the conveyor belts. Cool. It is pretty cool. There were quite a few munitions back there. All right, there's a timed segment. Huh. No time to waste. Seems like you've got a good idea of where to go. Well, I've done this before. And actually, it's funny you should say that! Because... It's like I jinxed you. <laughs> <laughs> you somehow jinxed me playing, like, a week ago when I actually re re recorded this. Oh, your, your, your bad, Your bad luck is actually retro-causal at this point. That's how powerful it is. Awesome. This is, this is one, of, one, one, one of my criticisms of the game, is that it sometimes is kind of confusing as to where to go. Like, it's not immediately obvious where you're, what you can climb over and what you can't. Yeah. Now, luckily... Um... Now, luckily, this, the timer here is pretty generous. Because I, I, I do still make it. Huh. Despite that screw-up. And I will say, I, I, one, thing, one, 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 one of the things, I, one of the reasons I like the timed segments in these games, in this game, is that the timer is tight enough that you can't fuck around too much. I mean, it's tight enough that there's like a real sense of urgency, but it's not so tight that it gets frustrating. You know what I mean? Right. So it gets that right balance between like, ten, you know, lots of tension without... Without being unreasonable. Well, at, at one second, that was not that was not planned or anything. It just turned out that way. That the maximum possible drama. Very nice. Act seven, chapter two. I don't hold you accountable. <laughs> 